Now we've done supraspinatus and we've looked at that supraspinatus infraspinatus interface. We're now going to look at infraspinatus at the posterior joint. Some people do struggle to find this. Some people will also teach you to do it in this position. Now I'm not going to teach you in that position because I find that people struggle to get the orientation of infraspinatus with that position. So actually I've just got the patient in neutral. So left side of the uh, probe is left side of the screen for me. Then what I would advise, and you'll see it on the probe position, is actually start quite laterally. And just to start with, find the humerus, which we can see there. It's round, it's easy. You can obviously heel and toe in that position. If you then come up and bring the wire up with you, then you're going to see the infraspinatus attaching into the back of the tuberosity, the back of the um, post, uh, posterior aspect of the greater tuberosity. Now, if we want to look at those fibers, remember we need to heel and toe. Then what we can do is we can slide the probe round, but remember we must push down the medial side of the probe as we go, and we can line up with these fibers here. Okay, so now what you can see is you can see the tendon attachment onto the posterior aspect of the greater tuberosity. You can see that lovely fibrillar pattern of infraspinatus. You've got some articular cartilage there. So again, that orientates you to where you may see some of the tears because most of the tears are going to be where it attaches on to that greater tuberosity. And then you can slide medially, heel down, get on top of those the fibers here, and you can see the intramuscular tendon of infraspinatus. So this is the muscle belly of infraspinatus here, and underneath that you can see the muscle belly as well. So this is the intramuscular tendon, and if we come more medially and we can see the spinoglenoid notch here, okay, we've got the glenoid, and then we've got the labrum here, and then you can see the capsule coming over the top with articular cartilage. You can ask your patient at that point just to rotate their arm out into lateral rotation. And look what happens there. Is, so this is actually the opposite of what people often teach. By doing that, actually laterally rotating, if you just do it once more for me, so in and out slowly, by going out, look what happens to the tendon. It straightens up, and if you just hold it there, and then you can see a really nice fibular structure of infraspinatus attaching into the back. If you go into a bit more rotation, can you see his tendon here actually gets a little bit thicker? So he has got a bit of tendinopathic change on those superior fibers of infraspinatus. And like everything, I would need to confirm that in transverse section here. And actually, if you just bring your hand in a little bit, good, hold it there. Can you see it is quite heterogeneous just on those superior fibers and it's certainly a little bit thicker. So I'm confirming that in two views and you can see it up here. So by getting the patient to laterally rotate, it actually means that the infraspinatus becomes parallel to the um, probe and therefore the sound beam is perpendicular and we will avoid an isotropy. So can you see that lovely image there? We can then have a look at the joint. So if we just rotate the hand in and then out, we can see if there's any fluid coming out of this posterior joint recess, and this is where we would target a glenohumeral joint injection under ultrasound guidance. So have a good look at that infraspinatus tendon, and you must look at it in transverse and long, and I would advise that instead of using this position all the time, that actually you start in neutral and you go into lateral rotation.